On this slide, we're gonna talk a little bit more for the motivation for why containers even exist. And what it's really all about is the, the struggle between isolation and density. If you look at this slide, what we've always had in the past is that you could have a PC and you could put different services on different PCs. With a PC, the hardware, or with different PCs, the hardware between them is not shared, right? Each service, if you put it on their own PC, the hardware is not shared between them, they each get their own PC. And because they're their own PC, they're not sharing the operating system kernel. They each have their own operating system kernel. So whatever happens on one kernel has no effect on the other. If you're using a lot of memory here, it doesn't affect what's happening on the other PC. And then there are system resources, like the file system. If you're on win Windows, then maybe it's the system registry. And if you have different PCs with different operating system kernels, then those other system resources are not shared. So you have a lot of a high isolation between these PCs. What happens on one does not affect the other one. But, you know, buying a new PC, introducing it into a cluster, networking it up with everything else, having the power management for it, that gets rather expensive, right? It's hard to maintain all of that. So while you get a lot of isolation, you don't get a lot of density. So another thing that you could do is you could have a single PC, and on that single PC, you could run a bunch of services, each one in their own process. And when you run them on the, as their own process on a single PC, well, then they are sh all sharing the hardware with each other. So if one of those processes is using a lot of network bandwidth or is using a lot of the hard disk drive, then that's taking some of the network bandwidth and hard disk drive away from the other processes that are running on that PC. The operating system kernel is shared by all those processes running on that one machine. So if one process is taking a lot of operating system kernel resources, then that means fewer kernel resources are available for the other processes running on it. And then, of course, the file system and like the system registry on Windows, those are all shared by all those processes. So if one process allocates a lot of disk space, for example, in the file system, that means there's less disk space available for the other processes. So processes gives us a lot, we can put a lot of processes on a single machine, but they're not heavily isolated from one another. So this is what we've had historically for many years. But we would like to kind of um, tighten this gap between these two things a little bit. So more recently, virtual machines were introduced, which have actually been around for many years now too. With virtual machines, we can put these virtual, virtual machines on a single PC. So we have one physical piece of hardware. That's the good news. Um, however, that hardware is therefore shared by all the virtual machines that are running on that PC. So if one VM is using a lot of the network bandwidth, then that does take some network bandwidth away from some of the other virtual machines that are running on that one PC. The operating system kernel, though, is not shared. This is a great thing. And it even allows us to run like a Windows VM and a Linux VM on the same physical machine side by side with one another because we can have different operating system kernels there. And the system resources in each VM is not shared. Each VM can have its own hard disk, for example, or you know, VHD, and when one VM is writing to it, it's isolated from what's happening in another. So one VM can try to delete files that are maybe being accessed by another VM. The VM isolates those resources out from one another. So the virtual machines is a big improvement and gives us a lot more uh, density than uh, a PC would, but it's a lot less density than a process, but it gives us more, much more isolation than what we get with a process. So while VMs are really great this way, the VM is still can be rather expensive, so there's only so many VMs that you could get on a single PC for running your service. So what was introduced are now containers, which brings us to our topic of conversation. Containers, containers is a much more recent uh, technology that has been introduced um, and has gained into the mainstream. With containers, the hardware is shared and the operating system kernel is also shared. So that's similar to a process. However, the system resources, like the file system, is not shared. So it gives us more isolation than a process, but, but containers are heavier weight resources than processes and therefore we have less density with them.
So I can now stand up multiple containers in a single virtual machine or, or on a single PC, but they all have to be sharing the same operating system kernel. So in other words, if Linux is installed, I can put up a bunch of Linux containers on there. Or if Windows is installed, I can put up a bunch of uh, Windows containers over there. Um, now, even more recently, Microsoft has introduced with the Windows what's known as a Hyper-V container. Uh, right now, this is a technology that is specific to Windows, and it kind of bridges the gap between a VM, so it's slightly less heavyweight than a VM, but it gives you better isolation than a container. So it's kind of filling a sweet spot between a VM and a container. With a Hyper-V container, the hardware is shared, just like with everything but for a PC, but the operating system kernel is not shared. So in other words, in a virtual machine, um, I could go and create a Hyper-V container that runs Windows, and I can also create a Hyper-V container that runs Linux, because the kernel is not being shared now, and I get an isolation boundary there. And then the, res the system resources are not shared, just like for a container or for a VM. So depending on what operating system you use, you have this Hyper-V container that's uh, possible for you, again, if you're on Windows.